Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about my top five most wanted features on the 2024 mountain lineup from Polaris. Hey, what features are you hoping that the 2024 sleds will have? Comment below. Polaris needs to fix the brake issue and remove the warning that was added with the latest ECU reflash warranty issue. We've had the warning come on multiple times while riding and not applying the brakes. This is likely a bug in the software. On our last ride, I was climbing up into a basin and the sled went into limp mode. I think it's in limp mode or something. My RPM dropped from about 8,200 down to 7,000. I didn't see the warning sign as my screen was covered in snow. Luckily, all I needed to do was shut down the sled, restart it, and I had full power again. If you hold the brake long enough, the sled will shut right down on its own as you can see here. That happened when I was three quarters of the way through the climb and I didn't touch the brake once. The 7S display needs a software update to fix the GPS issues and other bugs I've been having. At least once on every ride, I'll start the sled up, get going, and the display won't show me the speed, temperature, location on the map, or RPM. Look at this. Engine light, no temp. Key out. I wonder if there's a software update for this thing or something. Other times everything will be working properly except the GPS will show me in a location nowhere near me, like in a neighboring city such as Blairmore, Alberta. Yeah, I'm still here, my GPS just messed up. All of a sudden my GPS said I was downtown Blairmore. I'm like, <laughs> really? Okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm also now getting an engine light telling me that I have an exhaust valve actuator check failure. This started happening after I had my Polaris dealer do the ECU flash that added the brake warning feature. Now I have to take the sled back to the dealer and get them to relearn the exhaust valves. Polaris also needs to fix the fueling issues we've been having lately. My sled and my buddy's Matrix 850 will not start from time to time. Sometimes unplugging the diagnostic connector under the hood and pulling the sled over will get it to start. Just disconnect this one, and you're gonna start your sled, you're gonna pull it over. This disconnects the fuel pump. Pull it over a bunch of times, it should fire up. Once it fires up, shut it down, reconnect it, and you should be good to go. Other times we've had to hold the throttle wide open to get it to start. We've never had to do this on any of our previous fuel injected RMKs. <laughs> I had it wide open there, so better watch out. <laughs> Electric start. Their current system is convenient, but it's way too heavy. I want a starter similar to the shot system on the Skidoo's, which doesn't use a battery and only adds a few pounds. I don't mind starting the sled with the pull cord. I've been doing this my entire life, but I'd like to have the electric start. I have it on my dirt bike and it's a game changer. So many times you'll be on a tight trail or a side hill where kickstarting the dirt bike is very challenging. So press the button and away you go. The main thing here is energy savings. You save a lot of energy by not having to pull start the snowmobile, but then you got to muscle around an extra 20 pounds or so of weight on the front end of the sled where it's the most noticeable. My number one wish for players in 2024 is that they stop increasing the price of their snowmobiles. Too many people that I know are getting out of the sport due to the insane cost of snowmobiling. So let's hope that the new 2024 Polaris sleds haven't increased in cost from last year. Heading out for a ride pretty soon with Colin and DTB. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the video.